is yet to be among first to recover economically post-COVID-19. Malaysia wants Al Jazeera to apologize for misleading and baseless reporting. Good evening, folks. Thanks for joining us. You're watching News at 10, and I'm Ahmed Amin Carlos. Well, Malaysia has been recognized as one of the most successful countries in the world in handling and controlling the COVID-19 pandemic. And addressing about 250 staff of the Prime Minister's Department at the first assembly after the implementation of the Movement Control Order, the MCO, in Pujajaya today, Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin said the success was due to the hard work and cooperation from the government and the entire Malaysian society. Kesejahteraan rakyat, kerajaan tidak memandang remeh perkara ini yang berlaku di negara kita walaupun kita tidak mempunyai pengalaman untuk menguruskan hal sebegini selama lebih tempoh 60 tahun yang lalu. Hari ini kita berbangga kerana kita sudah sampai ke peringkat yang dikatakan PKPP. P yang akhir itu ialah pemulihan iaitu satu fasa yang boleh dikatakan memberikan kita banyak ruang untuk memulakan semula kehidupan kita seperti biasa. Tan Sri Muhyiddin added that even though the problem of COVID-19 is still not resolved until a vaccine has been found, Malaysia has to move forward, perhaps faster than other countries which are affected by the pandemic. The Premier also expressed his gratitude to civil servants and frontliners, including doctors, nurses, armed forces, police, the National Security Council, the National Disaster Management Agency, NADMA, and the Social Welfare Department for their effort in tackling COVID-19. Well, Tan Sri Puyedin also stressed that the procedure and way of working in the government must be reviewed to help the country rebuild itself in the new normal post-COVID-19. Well, it said practices employed by civil servants prior to COVID-19 can no longer be used and improvements are needed to ensure that any issues raised, especially those involving audits, can be formally resolved. The situation pasca COVID-19 has changed. Yang tak pernah kita jangka berlaku dan kalau kita menggunakan amalan-amalan prosedur-prosedur yang biasa yang telah kita gunakan zaman sebelum COVID untuk menguruskan isu-isu selepas COVID, maka tentu dia tidak menepati keadaan, situasi. We expect something to happen, it did not happen. Apa sebab? Karena masalah di bawah itu tidak semudah mana yang kita fikirkan. The Prime Minister said the Chief Secretary to the government, Dato Sri Muhammad Zuki Ali, who will be leading efforts to help government agencies serve the people better and bring the country's economy back on track. At the moment, Tan Sri Muhyiddin said civil servants are facing difficulties providing services to the Rakyat due to the pandemic, which is crippling many economic sectors. Well, the Prime Minister also pointed out that Malaysia would be among the first to recover economically compared with other countries in the region or even developed countries. Tan Sri Muhyiddin said according to the World Bank in its June 2020 Malaysia Economic Monitor, Malaysia's gross domestic product is expected to resume growth at 6.9% next year. Although the World Bank projected the Malaysian economy to recover next year, this Tan Sri Muhyiddin said depended on the efforts and measures taken by the government. Janganlah dengan sebab oleh kerana karena birokrasi dan permasalahan kita hadapi di peringkat pentadbiran, maka negara yang ke belakang boleh sedia ke depan daripada kita dari segi proses pemulihan. They recover faster than we do recover. Ini tidaklah merupakan satu contoh yang baik. Hence, the Prime Minister said the government has decided to review procedures at all decision-making levels as some authority will be given to department heads and agencies to make faster decisions on applications and approvals. 
Well, on a related matter, Tantri Mujerin said the worst affected industry by the COVID-19 pandemic, the tourism sector will need four years to recover. Well, the Premier said the four-year time frame, which was predicted by the Economic Action Council, or EAC, will also see new industry players entering the hard-hit sector. Tempo empat tahun kita akan melihat pemain-pemain yang baru, yang lama sebahagian besar mungkin sudah pun tutup kerana tidak boleh meneruskan penyagaan ataupun rugi, maka akan lahirlah pemain-pemain baru. Dan mereka ini memerlukan juga sokongan, mereka memerlukan bentuk bantuan-bantuan yang diharap akan mempermudahkan urusan mereka supaya sektor pelancongan sebagai contoh dapat balik semula antara penjana pendapatan negara yang terbesar. In his speech, Chancellor Mohyedin reiterated that the MCO, which halted economic activity since March, resulted in 2.4 billion ringgit in losses per day for the country. Therefore, he said the government's economic stimulus packages are proof that Putrajaya is determined to get the country's economy back on the right track. and 14 Malaysians still refuse to go for a second swab test. Well, Malaysia recorded five new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of cases to 8,668. Now, Health Director General Dr. Dr. Nora Hisham Abdullah explained that of the five new cases, two were local transmission cases, while three were imported cases involving two Malaysians and one permanent resident returning from abroad. Two cases penularan di dalam negara adalah di wilayah persekutuan Kuala Lumpur. Satu kes bukan warga negara dari saringan di dalam komuniti oleh pejabat kesihatan daerah iaitu seorang pekerja di restoran. Di negeri Selangor, satu kes warga negara Malaysia iaitu saringan kontak rapat kepada kes positif COVID-19 iaitu kes 8,649. Kes baru ini merupakan ahli keluarga pada kes yang positif. Dato Dr Noor Hisham also reported that another 11 COVID-19 patients were discharged from hospital, bringing the total cumulative discharged cases to 8,476. With this, the number of active COVID-19 cases in the country now stands at 71 cases. Of that, two patients are being watered in the intensive care unit, with both of them requiring the use of ventilators. The Health Director General also said that today marks the 22nd day in a row with no new COVID-19 death case as the number of fatalities related to COVID-19 remains at 121. Communications and Multimedia Minister Dato Saifuddin Abdullah has described the news report by Al Jazeera as flawed and inaccurate. Well, he said that Qatar-based media agency has printed a very bad image of Malaysia as it portrayed inaccurate accounts of how the Malaysian government had been managing the outbreak. Pada saya adalah uh, tidak sepatutnya. Kemudian uh, apabila bercerita tentang uh, layanan kita uh, berkaitan dengan COVID-19 di Malaysia, sesiapa saja yang kena jangkitan COVID-19, rakyat, <laughs> pekerja asing yang sah, parti, semua dilayan di hospital uh, kerajaan dengan duit rakyat Malaysia yang membayar cukai. Uh, jadi yang itu tidak diceritakan di situ. Siap kita hantar ambulan lagi untuk ambil eh, kalau mereka berada di rumah dan sebagainya. Kemudian dia membesar-besarkan cerita tentang kawat berduri. Uh, kawat berduri hanya berlaku di kawasan-kawasan uh, PKP apa ni? Uh, Yang, yang diperketat dan itu semua kena uh, rakyat Malaysia pun kena kena kepung dengan kawat berduri dan ini bukan soal uh, nak apa namanya diskriminasi tidak pada kita nak mengawal keadaan jadi tak timbul uh, soal diskriminasi 
And in response to the misleading Al Jazeera report, Senior Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob has asked for the international media agency to apologize to all Malaysians. Well, he said the report that claimed Malaysia has been discriminating illegal immigrants under the guise of public health and safety did not contain clear facts and full of baseless accusations. Saya amat berharap sebagai sebuah media antarabangsa yang sepatutnya mempunyai etika yang kewartawanan yang tinggi supaya mereka menghentikan tindakan yang mereka lakukan dan saya minta kalau boleh mohon maaf kepada rakyat Malaysia ini. Explaining further, the senior minister said the government has been working to curb the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, including among illegal immigrants by setting up quarantine centers for immigrants such as in the Malaysia Agro Exposition Park, Serdang, Maips. He said a total of 4,924 undocumented immigrants were screened and housed in four immigration detention depots nationwide. Of that number, a total of 777 individuals tested positive for COVID-19 and were isolated for further treatment while the other undocumented immigrants were sent back to their countries as per the law under Immigration Act. Saya cabar Al Jazeera tunjukkan negara mana yang memberikan kebebasan mutlak kepada yang tidak warga asing yang tidak berdokumen. Tidak ada jawapannya setahu saya tidak ada tetapi mungkin Al Jazeera mempunyai uh, senarai negara tersebut silakan. Kerana setiap negara mempunyai akta imigresen yang hampir sama iaitu setiap warga asing yang masuk ke dalam negara kita mesti negara mana-mana sekali mesti mempunyai dokumen perjalanan yang sah. On claims that authorities had locked up immigrants, he said this only occurred in enhanced movement control order EMCO areas, such as in Hulu Langat and Selangor Mansion, adding that it also included local Malaysians who were living in the areas. On another note, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said there are 414 individuals who have yet to take their second COVID-19 screenings after returning from overseas. Well, he said they were a part of the 1,400 individuals who were being tracked by the police since last week. Kita pun dah berbincang di dalam mesyuarat khas menteri-menteri dan telah bersetuju. Kalau 414 ni masih lagi belum tampil, insya Allah. Pihak polis akan datang ke rumah mereka untuk membantu mereka untuk pergi ke klinik-klinik kesihatan dan sebagainya. Jadi kalau Meanwhile, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri said discussions to reopen the Malaysia-Singapore borders are still ongoing as both governments are looking to allow three categories of Malaysians and Singaporeans who need to travel between the two countries. Well, he said this include those in the business community and Malaysians who have been living and working in Singapore for more than three months and some 250,000 Malaysians who travel to and from Singapore for work purposes. Tapi mesyuarat berpandangan kalau ingin diselesaikan perlu diselesaikan secara menyeluruh. Bukan saja fasa dia ada tiga kategori tadi, kalau boleh keseluruhan kategori tersebut perlu diselesaikan. Terutamanya yang melibatkan 250,000 rakyat Malaysia yang bekerja di Singapura. The Johor government will request an allocation of 1 billion ringgit from the federal government to revive the state's economy that has been hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Menteri Besar Datu Azni Muhammad said the allocation is particularly important for small and medium enterprises or SMEs involved in the manufacturing sector in Johor, which is one of the biggest contributors to the state's economy. Mengadakan pertemuan dalam masa yang terdekat dengan Kementerian Kewangan untuk uh, uh, memberi gambaran uh, uh, mengapa kajian negeri memerlukan uh, uh, peruntukan sekurang-kurangnya ataupun uh, bantuan kewangan sekurang-kurangnya satu bilion. Ini. Datu Hasni told us to reporters after chairing the first Ibrahim Johor Economic Council (IJEC) meeting in Iskandar Putri today. 
During the three-hour meeting, members of the council also considered the formation of implementation machineries like the unit for the implementation and coordination of national agencies on the economic stimulus package, that's Laksana, and special task force to facilitate business, Pamuda, to monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of the programs implemented by the state government. Tasik Glugor, Member of Parliament, Datu Shabuddin Yahya, has been appointed as Deputy Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, replacing Datu Edin Shazli Sith, who is now the Deputy Works Minister. Now, in the announcement made by the Prime Minister's Office, Datu Shabuddin would be housed under the portfolio supervising matters relating to the Parliament and law. In line with Clause Subsection 1, Matter 43A of the Federal Constitution, the young Dibetuan Agong Al-Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin al Mustafa Billah Shah had consented to the appointment. The ceremony for the presentation of appointment letter, taking of oath and swearing in as a deputy minister before the young Dibetuan Agong, took place earlier today. Dajo Shahabuddin, 54, a former Sharia court judge, is from Parti Pribumi Brasatu Malaysia and a two-term MP for the Tasi Glugor constituency. News at 10. In our top story, Malaysia to be among world's first to recover economically post COVID 19 and resume growth at 6.9%. Join us again at 12 30 tomorrow afternoon for more updates on the latest happenings around the world. I'm Amin Carlos. Do stay tuned to Saloran Brita RTM and have a pleasant evening.